Welcome to Girls Talk Scuba. Now you're probably wondering who on earth we are. I'm Ellie. I'm Emmy. And this is the podcast where we talk all things scuba. Including, but not limited to, education. They don't know whether to do a buoyancy course Mm. or whether they actually want to just get some more fun dives under their belt. Equipment. We asked you what the first piece of equipment you bought was and the results are in. And destination. I really want to dive in the Caribbean and I really want to go diving with sharks. Make sure you subscribe to never miss an episode. Hello and welcome to Girls Talk Scuba. We have a really exciting topic to cover with you guys today, um, so do stick around for that. But before we dive right into the podcast, we wanted to actually introduce ourselves properly um, because, you know, it, it gives a better understanding of who we are and where yeah. we've come from. So I don't even know who you are. I so. don't know who you are either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in the long and short of it, my name is Ellie. I am from uh, England originally. I now live on the Costa del Sol in Spain near Malaga. Um, I'm a scuba diving instructor, which means I'm in the water pretty much every single day in our high season. And uh, in our low season, I tend to dive and try and get in the water three or four times a week at least. But it's Mm. colder then. It's freezing. (laughs) Yes, it's really cold. My name is Emmy, and I'm originally from Cornwall in the UK. But I moved to the Costa del Sol when I was about seven years old. So I've been here for nearly 19 years, I think. Um, I'm a paddy scuba instructor. And like Ellie said, in the high season, we're pretty much in the water every day, Mm -hmm. all day. And then in the low season, I try and go diving as much as I can when the viz is good and when it's not 14 degrees. (laughs) (laughs) But where or what is your favorite marine life to see underwater? Octopus. Octopus? All the way. 100%. (laughs) Not even thinking. Not even thinking about it. It's the only thing I look for when I'm diving. I'm looking for the octopus nests of where are they? I just think they are so not only underrated compared to other life, so like sharks or manta rays or, or whatever. Octopus for me are the thing to <laughs> the see. The thing to see underwater. Not only, they're so curious, so intelligent mm. and so playful. When, yeah. when you gain the trust of them and you can, they come out of their nest and they're curious, they want to see what all the bubbles are <laughs> or what the camera is pointing at them. It's so funny watching them. It's interesting you say that because I think I do love octopus, but for me, my favourite marine life to see is nudibranchs. Oh, I love a nudibranch. And if you don't know what a nudibranch is, they're like tiny, tiny, tiny little sea slugs. And they are literally my favourite thing to see underwater. The colours are just... Yeah, they're so beautiful. And also... They they're just really cool to watch as well. Like if yeah. you can get and a video like of aliens, them. they're yeah. just like not, some of them that I've seen. You'd think that they're not from this planet, they're right? Just crazy. They're really really nice. But also, I when I first started diving, and I saw nudibranchs and I became literally obsessed with them. Um, I then bought myself an Olympus TG6. You know, the, <laughs> yeah, we both have them. We're both fanatics for that camera. Um, and I started to use the um, microscopic. Um, the macro it, or the yeah. microscope yeah. and started trying to take pictures of it but I actually really struggled because at the time my buoyancy wasn't great mm. um and I was really struggling to because when you go into the microscopic mode you actually really, you have, really to have to stay, stay still, still. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like this is a nightmare and all I think not I only took, that when you put it in the mode you have to spend two minutes trying like, to find trying where to find the needy is <laughs> <laughs> but I think like I literally took about 500 photos of just yeah. nothing ba, 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 yeah. ba, ba. <laughs> Um, but it's interesting we talk about that because um, today we thought we'd kind of dive into the Girls That Scuba community and um, one of the posts that we found we, what we want to talk about is actually to do with buoyancy. Buoyancy. Um, and I think it's such a common problem and topic that people talk about because, you know, it's one of the main things of scuba diving mm. is literally... It is really important neutral to have buoyancy. good neutral buoyancy. Yeah. Um, so looking at the post, um, it basically explains this person's having... Um, problems slight problems with their buoyancy they're quite a new diver um but they basically are stuck they don't know whether to do a buoyancy course Mm. or whether they actually want to just get some more fun dives under their belt and they're asking what other people's experience is you know what what do they think is best for them to do um and the comments are really interesting aren't they yeah i've been reading through that some of them suggest just to carry on doing fun dives and get used to the gear that you're using or just gain more experience and more confidence and then there is another half where they're recommending the pbb course and me personally i would say to go for both Mm. get more experience first get more comfortable in the gear that you're using whether it's from a shop or if it's your own gear because that does really change your buoyancy a lot i think um especially if you get like 
when the first day when you get your new BCD and you've done all your training on the shop BCD and now you've got your own one and you can feel a massive difference. Sometimes Absolutely. you might need to add more weight. Sometimes you take more weights off. Yeah. It really depends. I think, so if anyone doesn't know what kind of the buoyancy course is effectively, I think a lot of different training agencies have the kind of same com- concept of it. But basically the buoyancy course is where you work with an instructor to um, basically fine tune your buoyancy. So you learn a little bit more um, about kind of what contributes to it. So again, weight distribution, mm. you know, some people different techniques yeah different techniques for where you can put your weights obviously if you have say a bcd as well that has trim pockets and stuff they you know they can spread spread your weight out a little bit more you also learn more things like the buoyancy check um you have a bit more time to play around with that yeah and also you do also get to practice usually sometimes in a pool or like in a nice dive site where it's quite shallow and don't and get discouraged by the pool because the pool is really hard yeah to be neutral buoyancy especially here if you have a shallow pool you're learning in a shallow pool i find it a lot harder absolutely i think everyone does it's just yeah. because you're you know you've got a certain depth to play between whereas mm-hmm. you know in the sea maybe you have a little bit more and i think a lot of people do find when they go into the sea after their pool session after the pool they're like I feel really discouraged and a lot of comments actually do mention that as well Um, and that's quite sad to hear I think especially as an instructor because it is also our job to ensure that you're not walking away from it discouraged you're walking away from it feeling excited for the next day Mm -hmm. Um, but no so the buoyancy course is basically in in a summary is just literally something that we can teach you or try to teach you about how to help with your buoyancy but as a lot of the comments in it say as well it's not like an overnight miracle and that's what I think is good about these comments is a lot of people are saying it is just building confidence and practice it really is it it's more experience i think you need to dive as much as you can and try not to focus on it try not to make that your only goal when you go on a dive because i think if you start thinking about it while you're diving that's when it starts to become not necessarily a problem but it starts to overtake and then you're not enjoying the dive so much and it can come at your confidence a little bit more mm. especially if you can comparing yourself to other people mm. um i do i do think buoyancy is one of those things where y- if you compare it to something else that you do in life i mean whether that's you do another hobby on the side or something but i always try and say you know when i first started driving i learned in a manual car and constantly for the first few months of me driving i was constantly thinking about changing gear and i was like right first to second to third <laughs> um and then eventually it becomes like second nature it and i natural, think yeah. you you build that confidence with like actually no i know when i need to change gear in the car and it's kind of the same thing with your buoyancy is mm. you start to learn when you do need to add air through your jacket or perhaps when you just need to yeah, you know take a deeper breath in. going over objects to so say like you have to swim over a rock. I find that a lot of people will be adding air into the BCD and taking it out. And there are other ways around it. You can use your breathing. So if you see that you're coming up to the rock, you can take a nice deep breath in. Then once you're um, over the rock, you can start letting that breath out. And that helps as well instead of using your air. Mm. And I think another good thing about what people have mentioned in the comments is also the fact that when you dive more and you become more comfortable in the water, just overall, you naturally have more relaxed breathing. And that is something you know we talk about breathing and and, you know each of us this is a fact for you we take on average twenty two thousand breaths in and out a day wow yeah so we all know how to breathe you know we're not (laughs) questioning double that that if you're me going upstairs (laughs) yeah um but it's something that when you've got a lot of other things going on and you're maybe a bit apprehensive in the water and that's normal for anyone if if you know if you haven't been diving for too long and you're a bit apprehensive about the day in a different environment you're used to i get apprehensive yeah cold water diving it it all builds into the same thing and that does affect your breathing i mean especially well you know when we talk about that i sometimes when i go to a different place and i do a different dive the very first dive that i do i am apprehensive because it's a new boat that i'm on or it's a new shore dive that i've never done before or the gear can you trust the gear it's different gear yeah, yeah absolutely and that's interesting because you know it's not just something that a new diver struggles with i think throughout your whole dive life you do yeah. have that yeah um and 
your buoyancy always will be affected by that so i think it's it's always a good thing whenever you're going somewhere new or you're diving just to take like i always like to take a little bit of time before my dive just to relax myself mm. and a lot of people in the comments are also saying they kind of practice the yoga style breathing i, I saw that yoga to help with the breathing techniques i think that's a good yeah good suggestion and that's something you can also practice if you don't have immediate uh immediate access to like a swimming pool or mm. dive gear to practice in that's another great thing you can do to help with your buoyancy it's just to yeah. practice your breathing on dry land exactly and i think once you're in the pool you can make it fun as mm. well we like to get the hula hoops out and we like to have a little game to see who can go through the hula hoop without touching the top of the bottom that's really whether fun. you're doing it upside down or backwards <laughs> or just going straight through i think it's a lot of fun as well as learning the techniques of doing it yeah there's loads of dive games you can actually play as well with like frisbees underwater yeah. and making sure you try and catch them or building blocks i saw someone said in the community that they use like the kids building blocks yeah and they have to build the um you know the block underwater <laughs> um without kind of touching but it's also like a mental thing because yeah. you're focusing on something else mm. that then the buoyancy is kind of becoming a subconscious thing um in the back of your mind so it's it's one of those things just to put you in different situations to handle your breathing and your equipment and everything mm. like that to make it more second nature yeah and play around with the weights I oh 100 percent um a lot of people just think it's a weight belt or the weight pouches but spread them out yeah put some on the d-rings on your bcd to help you keep down or even ankle weights because yeah, some, some people pe some use, people have yeah. got really buoyant legs mm. Um, and the trim weights at the back, if you've got trim weights on your BCD, they really help as well. Mm. I, think. I, th I think it's interesting you mentioned equipment here, actually, because the other thing is, obviously, across the world, we all use different style equipment mm. and everything. And one thing that I particularly find I struggle with with my buoyancy when I travel is in Europe, we tend to use um, steel tanks. And when I go to somewhere like the Caribbean, we use obviously alley tanks there. Mm. So this is another thing is that if you've learned with a certain style of tank and then you're going somewhere else in the world and you change the equipment and it applies as well for rental gear, as you said, you know, that will affect your buoyancy too. Yeah. Whether you're wearing a seven mil suit or a three mil suit, that's going to affect your yeah. weight, how much weight you need. Um, but also, again, what I said with the tanks is, for me, I dived recently in Barbados and I was at the end of my safety stop. I was struggling to stay down a little bit because obviously the aluminium tanks become more buoyant yeah. towards the end of the dive when you're using and more that's air. why I have extra weights. Like, I started off on eight kilos, mm. got more confident, got more experience with the buoyancy, went down to six kilos. That was good. Tried four, but realized by the end of the dive, I was really buoyant. Yeah. And I was holding on to rocks or things like that. And I don't know about for you, but I personally would rather have, um, obviously it's important to do a weight check, ensure that you're not overweighted. Cause we also, I think we see a lot of divers that are overweighted, yeah. but also there's almost like this, I've, feel like a competition sometimes of the oh, if you have less weight then you're a better a diver but i don't I, i'd rather be comfortable in my dive exactly. and not be would, struggling to yeah, keep down i'd rather be slightly overweighted knowing that i'm gonna be fine for my safety stop yeah especially if you're on like an alley tank you know yeah. otherwise if you've gone through your air quite a bit and then you're at the end and you've just dived with enough to keep you down then and I don't think it does necessarily make you a better diver. I think there is obviously a thing that you can see when you're diving more, mm. when your weight does go down because you 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 know your breathing relaxes a lot more and you're more relaxed in the water, so you're properly exhaling and inhaling in your lungs. There's no mm. apprehensive breathing or anything, um, and also because you're using less energy to go through the water. But I don't think there's any rush to kind of reduce your weight down to a minimum. No, and. The tips and tricks that I've I've read as well is using not using your hands to yeah. swim as well. I think as well when you're swimming above a rock, like the example I used before, I see a, a lot of people will use their hands, and mm. that would it's just going to make you go up. Yeah, well, exactly. The more you move yourself, the harder your buoyancy is to achieve. Yeah. But I also think, as you say, it also conserves your air. Because the less you move and the more um, slowly you go through the water and the less you're moving about, you actually come out with a lot more air, don't Everything you? in diving is relaxed. Yeah, just nearly chill. asleep. <laughs> just go with the animals, the sea creatures. Well, it's funny, isn't it? Because you see, you, you found a fact earlier, didn't you, about sea turtles? Sea turtles, yeah. So sea turtles, with their buoyancy, because, I mean, their buoyancy is amazing. They can just <laughs> sleep midair. 
um, they use their lung. They use their breathing it's just the like us. us. Same as us. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think the, the main things that we talk about when we talk about buoyancy and everything like that is just one obviously speak to dive buddies the girls at scuba community yeah your instructor There's advice everywhere absolutely and also practice but don't stress yourself out yeah I think. don't go into it thinking like this is what i got to focus on this is what i gotta do yeah just have fun take in any advice that you've been given and just practice just yeah keep going for dives and i do think you know it's summed up quite well i don't think it should be either or when it comes to you know the buoyancy course or no definitely fun not, dives. it's always good to do the course it's, it's as well as good yeah. to do more fun dives but it also depends what kind of person you are you know if you want to have that extra bit of help with an instructor and you feel safer you know sometimes when you go on a fun dive you don't always have that extra bit of time that you want just to help and sort out your buoyancy because mm. the guide sometimes just goes on and you want to keep up with the group so I think yeah, that's also a good thing if you're doing the course then you're actually there for that so you yeah. get to spend that time to work on it and it's that extra time that you want but equally it is just experience and diving more and more more and, and more and yeah. just being more relaxed in and building the your environment that you're in yeah. yeah and i think that should be something that i literally have seen in so many of these comments that people get discouraged because they do it and they can't quite get the grasp on it and it is frustrating i get frustrated myself if especially I especially if you're comparing yourself or comparing your buoyancy to other people's buoyancies mm like everyone is different everyone's struggled no one has magically just gone yep yeah, i'm neutrally buoyant now yeah. <laughs> it does not work like that it really doesn't it's just a lot of practice a lot of communication between you and your instructor or the course that you're doing and just experience yeah and also just testing out different things i think it took me gosh a long time with my equipment that i dive in daily now is took me a while to find what works what doesn't mm. if i got a new piece of equipment i got the um like these shorts that go over my wetsuit and yep. they're quite big pockets so they actually the first time I went I went on my normal weights didn't think even for a minute it would affect my buoyancy oh, and it course, did it was. and I was like oh yeah oh yeah so it <laughs> still happens to this day and I'm like okay I need to add a little bit more now yeah so I think it's just that that remembering obviously to relax I think firstly to remember just to try and gain experience wherever you can mm. if you want a little bit of extra one-to-one -one or in a small group training then obviously do look at doing the course and also you can learn and advance your skills and your knowledge as well about how yeah. buoyancy works as and well your confidence as well once yeah. you've done the course you come out of it feeling a lot more yeah like this is confident. what I know I want to yeah. do this is where I'm going a bit wrong or this is what I'm struggling with so I think that's always good and I mean the it's nice to see people talking about it as well because it is such an important part of diving. Oh yeah, can't be destroying that coral. <laughs> no. You've got to stay off the floor, Yeah, but not it, at the surface either. No. You've got to be and it, I mean, it makes you a safer diver, mm. for sure. And it also protects the environment around us that we're diving within, you know. Which no is one, really important. Yeah, no one wants to hurt the environment around us. No. It also, if you're interested in stuff like photography, it's an amazing course or something to practice because as I mentioned at the beginning when I was trying to take photos of nudie pranks and I was getting like just a smear of the rock um, I was just slowly floating up yeah. <laughs> and I'm like oh no <laughs> deflate deflate um, but also I think in, when we're talking about equipment and when we were a minute ago we mentioned VCDs you know that is something that I couldn't live without personally is like my personal BCD my own BCD I know, yeah yeah because I know where my weights are distributed I have like as well when you're looking at your um ways to deflate sometimes if my legs are a little bit buoyant because I do have a little bit buoyant legs um I know that I can easily de deflate from my back toggle mm. so it's all these things that you can just kind of tailor to yourself yeah and play around with the weights that's yeah. all I'd say I'm a bit OCD with my weights I like to have I don't like to have three two kilos I like to have two three kilos and, <laughs> and two half kilos it's yeah, quite we like all have our own weights don't yeah. we in the dive centre like don't touch these ones these are mine <laughs> But I think it's, yeah, it's one of those topics which is never going to be solved overnight, but it is important to talk about because so many people do obviously struggle with it and it's normal to struggle with it. It is. Gain experience, relax, and also gain confidence because that's what we're all here to support each other to do mm. is to learn. And you never stop learning either, I don't think. I think the Facebook, the Girls at Scuba Facebook community is so good for that it's because no one, no one judges, no one has anything bad to say. It's all just help and advice and 
just loads and loads of good ways to help with for example the buoyancy yeah especially with the yoga trick i didn't know that yeah Helping. i think we should start trying to do yoga I mean, yeah see if we can morning yeah <laughs> see if we can help our buoyancy is i mean it is just one of those natural things isn't it but all these tips and tricks go away and try them see what works yeah. for you and i think that's the only way you can actually decipher yeah well there's lots more advice and a lot more tips and tricks on the Facebook Girls at Scuba community. Yeah, and you so can also search on it, out. can't you? So yeah. have a look at that. So, Emmy, the point of this episode was to look at should someone do more fun dives or should they do a buoyancy course to help them? And I think we've had some great argument points, haven't we? From both sides, mm. yeah. And, and I think at the end of the day, it's just more fun dives. doesn't matter which way you go, if you practice more fun dives or if you start the buoyancy course, at the end of the day, it all comes down to practicing yourself and doing more fun dives absolutely so don't forget guys we'll be back next time and uh, make sure you do subscribe and also rate the podcast to ensure that you get notified when we release a new episode